We are out in the garden today and guess what day it is? I have all my seedlings from indoors. So you guys have been on the journey with me where we started these seedlings indoors. You probably saw a video on it. And now my cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, those early cool loving plants, seedlings are ready to go. So I've been hardening them off outside, getting them acclimated to the outdoor weather, starting with an hour, two hours, every few days and getting it more and more until they're used to the elements, which today's kind of nice. It's an overcast day. And I love to plant seedlings on overcast days because on direct full sun days, well, it can be a little hard on them and it can stress them out. So on these overcast days, it's really nice. But you can see I have quite a few of my seedlings here. And every year I rotate my raised beds one space. So it's not for every four years that they're in the same spot. And what I do every year to one of these beds is just top dress it in some compost. I have a compost pile that I slowly am working on always. And what I do is I brought some compost over. This is my last little pile. And I just add some nice, nice compost here to the bed. And you can see what's nice about this. My compost is pretty much acting as a soil would. It's pretty much almost like a topsoil in the sense that it's not big chunks of things. It's this nice, loamy, just beautiful textured dirt, soil, compost. That's what it is. It just works in. And what it has is lots of wonderful nutrients. So I add lots of leaves to my compost, green material when I'm done with it in the garden or in flower beds. And then after, you know, three-ish years usually of sitting and turning in a pile with manure and any of those clippings, it turns into this beautiful, compost that's just ready to go and ready to plant in. So I only do about an inch or two usually on top of my raised beds. And that is the whole point of a raised bed system. You don't till up the soil in a raised bed. There's microorganisms living in the soil. There's lots of wonderful healthy structure. Instead what you do is you add a layer and you're only suppressing whatever weed seeds could be in your raised beds. Suppressing them down. When you till them you bring all those seeds to the top. They get light air moisture and guess what they do? They grow. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna map out, I'm gonna set my plants out, kinda of how I wanna plant them, then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna plant them. So I like to do a mixture here, and you can see I start a lot of my own because there's certain ones always that I want. Some of them I did with soil blocking, meaning they don't have separate containers, and some of them I did in cell packs or small containers, it just depends. So you can see they're ready to go because, look how big these guys are, they look super healthy, super exciting. So I'm loving how these are looking. So before I lay them out, I'm gonna go get a little bit of fertilizer so we can get the bed off correct for the year and then we'll get started. So I don't like to put synthetic fertilizers on my garden beds. Honestly, the compost is a lot of nutrients that I just love to use. But every so often, I do like to add a little bit of organic, organic is the key component here, plant tone. Because plant tone is just an all-purpose, but it's not a synthetic all-purpose. It's an organic all-purpose fertilizer. And it can just be really good for my garden beds. Especially because, you know, I don't add a lot of compost every year. I just add some. So this adds some more organic nutrients to the soil and really just helps these beds. And you know, honestly, we can all use a little bit of help. And the thing is, you work it into just the top couple inches. I don't want to till in anything. And that's the whole point. You don't want to till this in, but since I put down some compost, all I now have to do is just slowly either rake this or work it in like this, and that's all it takes. So this is just one of those great practices to me to get into when you're getting ready for spring like this. You're going through getting your beds ready, and you're just getting them a little bit more nutrients. This is also a good time to kind of look at your overall soil health see how nicely it breaks up. I don't know, I think there's just something wonderful about getting outside in the spring, yeah, in the spring, and getting actually something planted in the garden and realizing you are gonna have your food growing in your beds in no time. So I'm just gonna finish working some of this in and then we're gonna get started planting. So I'm setting my last two Chinese cabbage out. They have really just grown so well. So most cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, I like to keep 18 to 24 inches apart on all sides if I can. I'm not gonna say I don't jam them slightly closer together just because, well, I like to fit in quite a few. Now, the one question I know I'm gonna get, what do you do with all that produce? 
I eat it. So if I don't eat all this, I preserve it. I make sauerkraut. I like to pickle cauliflower and can it. I have recipes for that on my website. I love to use all this and guess what? When you grow it, you find ways to enjoy it more. So what I like to do first is set out and somewhat measure my plants to make sure they're gonna be spaced correctly. And now I want to go through and I wanna actually plant them, which we will end up with one that I can really zone in and show you, but I wanna quickly get all these in, so let's get going. So I'm finishing up with my last two, which you can see here. Now, I always make sure that my root structure is somewhat broken up, but honestly, look, this is why I love raised beds. You can just, with your hand, go in and plant them. Now, the one thing I do make sure with any of my cabbage, any of my cauliflower, I plant them, make sure to plant them at the right depth. Don't wanna to go too deep, obviously, to bury their crown, but you wanna plant them deep enough so the wind doesn't break them off. Because if you just kind of put them above ground like this and then plant them too high, the wind can come through, especially where I live here on the prairie, the wind really does come creeping down the lane. And it doesn't creep, it just hollers down and it can really break things. So I make sure to plant them at a depth that they're going to be sufficiently sturdy and the plant will be able to withstand some of that wind. Now, the raised beds actually can protect them a little bit and add some much of a windbreak too a little bit. But guys, that is how easy it is. Yeah, I know some of that was sped up, but uh, it really can be quick. We're, we're saying 10 minutes once they're laid out to really plant a 24 foot bed is what this is. And look how many I planted within it. That's gonna be so much fresh cabbage salads, cooked cabbage, sauteed cabbage, sauerkraut, broccoli, cauliflower for fresh eating, but for roasted too, I love it. So I will of course go through and now water each one. You know, seedlings, this is now a new environment for them. So I started them obviously indoors and they had a controlled environment with no wind, no real sunlight, but now I have them outdoors and tempered them to the outdoors, but they still are gonna take time to get acclimated. So. If we get extremely cold nights, like too far below freezing, I will probably come and cover these. But hopefully it looks like we're gonna be out of that. So I think we should be pretty good. But uh, before we know it, we're gonna have some beautiful plants and I'll take you on for that journey, I'll show you. So I'm gonna keep watering. I hope you can see that, guess what? Anyone can plant a garden. So share this video, not only to help me, but so everyone can see, they can plant a garden. You don't need to plant a 24 foot long bed. Plant one cabbage plant. You'll be glad when you're eating that cabbage. 